So hi, my name is Ryan Innes. I have a beautiful bride named Becky and one son named Elijah John. And we live and reside in this Tacoma area in the city here. I feel like God has called us to make disciples of these young students in this Tacoma urban area. Um, we're blessed to work for Young Life, so we use Young Life as, an, as a vehicle to do that, and also SOMA. Um, so we're just excited to be able to uh, share the good news of Jesus through both of those incredible vehicles, through the missional community concept, and also just be able to preach the good news of Jesus in everyday life. So in this season, Becky and I have learned just the importance and the vitality of being present. The ministry of presence speaks so highly in volume to these young people, especially in this urban context, where some of them have never met their, their father or their mother. Um, a lot of them are, have some, experienced some aspect of homelessness, so there's not much consistency at all going on in their lives. So the presence and consistency together are of most importance. And we've learned that over the last few months that we cannot show up just once a month or even once every couple of weeks that we need to be in their lives, whether it's in the weight room, lifting weights with the football team, or it's in the hallways at school, whether it's being present after school, just by showing our face and saying a few encouraging words, it just, it just speaks volumes of why we're here, how much we care, and that actually we want to, to know them and love them and serve them well. So those are two of the major themes. And also the third theme is just being vulnerable, being, able to, being willing and able to share some of your own struggles, where you've been in life, and how really, how, this, how Jesus has used some of your struggles, some of your pain, some of your, your lack of discipline in life to bring out redemption and how he's bringing restoration in that in us as well. So we're able to be vulnerable, be present, and be consistent has been a huge, huge blessing to us to be able to learn that in this season, to be able to earn trust, earn the right to be heard, to be present in their lives on a daily basis. So some of the struggles that Becky and I and our missional community have experienced is um, just calling people to something that is so much bigger than themselves as Jesus called his followers to leave all to follow him. In a sense, in this urban context, um, we would love to do the same thing, um, where we, do, we work with, with students that don't have much, that need a lot of attention, that need a lot of that life on life, um, just application with people opening up their lives bringing them into their homes and sharing meals and, and offering uh, them to go to work with them and, and just being at their, their sporting events and just that, that constant connection, that constant encouragement is such a beautiful, beautiful ministry in itself. And uh, so that has been somewhat of a challenge for us is uh, getting, getting people um, with, the, with the availability and the flexibility to, to be that present to be that consistent, again, with um, being able to be open like that, being able to be available on a, on a regular basis, and also really challenging them to actually, if you have five minutes to show up at school, if you have five minutes to show up at a sporting event, that just goes, that just goes so far in just the relationship that you have with these students. So that has been a challenge for, for me and for our missional community so far is actually calling people to something that's bigger than themselves, but actually have them apply that to all of us, to our lives. In a sense, where we're gonna walk in that, where I know we're, we get home from work and we're tired and it's tough. We don't necessarily wanna go to a basketball game at seven o'clock at night when we've been working for 10 hours and getting the kids in the car and, and, and walking to a gym and, and just showing our faces for, even if it's for 10 minutes or if it's two hours. But that's, that's one of the things that, especially in this youth role that we're in at Lincoln High School, we really want to be on a mission in a way where we're constantly present, constantly consistent, and making disciples who make disciples. And that's going to be one of the things that, uh, that really that goes a long ways is being able to call people to that higher standard. Be like, you know what, it's not just once in a while, it's, it's really giving and devoting our lives to being on mission and being available and being present on a regular basis. And um, a beautiful, a beautiful uh, blessing for us is we haven't had too much of a challenge actually um, getting into these schools. 
The Spirit has done some amazing work before us and just given us grace to walk in to Lincoln and some of these schools and really with no questions asked, just having these doors just flown wide open and for us to be able to spend time with these students and build those relationships. So I know in a lot of other places, even around the Tacoma area, it's not so, it's not like that. There's been challenges, there's been questions, there's been red tape and, and, and things that we'd have to kind of walk around and, and, and be super patient with even, even to walk in these doors. But, but God's been so good and so faithful to, to us and allowing us to be able to um, just, just to walk into Lincoln on a, on a daily basis and really share the good news of Jesus and love people well through that. So we are super thankful for that. So some of the fruit that we've seen in this season um, is we've seen young people come to know Jesus. There's been many young people that we've got to share the good news of Jesus with in the weight room and just one-on-one -on -one conversations and small group conversations and it has been incredible to see the work of the Holy Spirit in some of these people, in these young people's lives. Um, just recently got to share Jesus with a Muslim student that was in the weight room. And he has now been asking, asking questions. Okay, so who is this Jesus? How, I mean, how, what does it look like to follow him? What is, is this really true? What does this look like for me in my family that I've, I've, I, all I've heard of is something different who Jesus is, but, who, but, I, I, but from you I'm hearing something that is so that is so powerful and so different than what I've always heard. And so that has been some of the amazing fruit we've seen thus far. So this next school year, we'll be starting MDNAs, which will consist of four to six students and maybe one or two adults. And that's a little bit different than our DNAs because usually it's one adult with three adults. And the reason for that, we just feel that it might make it a little easier for students to feel comfortable at a faster rate opposed to coming to a relationship with an adult and there might be one or two students like, oh man, I don't know if I really super, feel super comfortable with this. So we're gonna start off with a little bit uh, higher numbers to make it a little bit easier for kids to be comfortable and hopefully they can be more transparent through that, the reason why we do that. And uh, we're excited to have and start MDNAs because we're, just, we're excited to be able to share Jesus, the entirety of the gospel, to teach gospel fluency, to, to talk about the story of God, um, and some of, our, some of our students have never heard the story of God, never, has never really truly heard just the good news of Jesus, just the life, death, and resurrection, what that means for them. They, have, they may have gone to church for, for different seasons of their life, for long seasons of their life, but never really truly heard the true, the good news of what Jesus has done. And so we're excited to, uh, to see young people come to know Jesus and the truth about Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so that's the main reason why we're starting these MDNA so to really teach um, just what the Bible is and what it what it says and who we are in light of of what God has done and 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 to really bring kids to worship Jesus through that so we're very excited for this season coming up so if I could leave anybody with any advice it would be to lead your community your missional community um, in prayer being constant prayer just asking the Spirit to continue to go before you and your community as you make disciples in this high school context. That it's his work, it's his transforming power that is all the work. And we're just so blessed and join God in the restoration of this work. And secondly, students desperately want to be valued, they want to be known, and they want to be loved. So I would, I would constantly encourage people and remind remind people and, help, and hope to remind myself that, you know, for the power of the gospel, for the power of sharing the good news of Jesus, that students would know that they are known, that they are valued, and they are loved because of what Jesus has done for them. So that's the advice I would leave, is to consistently be in prayer, consistently have students know that they are known, that they are valued, and they are loved by this God that we are professing and proclaiming and we are living out by word and deed.